Hi everyone, welcome back to the second part of this 1155 revival. Surgery. So as you may or may not know, this old heap's got a fistful of issues with it. You might have saw in the beginning of the first video, bottom was full of antifreeze. It has no hydraulics whatsoever. Uh, other than that, it's a pretty good looking tractor, so, I mean, it's got that going for it. And we do now know that it runs pretty good. Now, back to, back to the, now back to the first issue, antifreeze in the black. Now, before you guys go jacking me up about that, let me tell you what I've done. Um, I wanted to make an entire video on, on that. I thought that'd be, that'd be great. The problem is, I can't find out where it's coming from. Now, I took, I took a couple days time working on this to see if I could, you know, solve that problem. Um, I, I drained all the oil, pulled the injectors, pulled the oil cooler, filled the antifreeze to the top, pressurized it, let it sit for a couple days, kept pressure on it all the time. Um, I got nothing. I mean, I got nothing. It holds good pressure. It holds 15 psi. The only it holds 15 psi for a pretty good darn long time. I think the only reason it was bleeding down was because the, the uh, pressure tester I borrowed was, it wasn't brand new, let's just say. The only place I could get coolant to leak was around this top radiator hose right here. That's it. That's it. To make matters better, I pulled it out in the yard and I run it at 1500 RPMs for an hour. Nothing. No odd colored smoke, nothing. It just, Kept my neighbors awake for an hour that day, so I really don't know. Now, problems like this don't solve themselves. I know it's going to come back, but I feel like it's not going to come back until I really work it hard and get some heat cycles through it as it heats and cools, it expands and contracts. So if there's a crack somewhere, uh, does that mean it's going to expand the crack when it gets hotter, or does that mean that the rest of the metal is going to push the crack together? I, I don't know. This problem will come back, and I'll, I'll, I'll burn that bridge when it gets here. As for now, the other problem, we got no hydraulics. Now, uh, let me give you a quick 101. Now, any of you guys that own these tractors, you already know this, so maybe this would be a good time to get up and go get a beer out of the fridge or pop or water or, you know, whatever, whatever you like. For those of you who don't know, here's how these work. Here's a bell housing. Obviously, your transmission input shaft goes into the clutch right here. Um, now, what this has in the very center under the clutch is a hub. This shaft, which is not the transmission input shaft, this is the PTO drive shaft. This, your input shaft on the transmission is hollow. This baby slides right through there. This hooks up in here into the flywheel in, uh, in a little splined coupler. Hold that thought, let's move back. So, so this guy sits in here like this. The flywheel spins this all the time. Now you get back here. There's another small coupler, about yay big. Then, okay, from there, that coupling is Right about here, where the where they where they split, there's another small shaft that runs to this guy. There we go, this guy. That is your PTO clutch basket. Now, if you notice that splined, if you notice this gear on it, that gear turns the charge pump, which sits right in this neighborhood, sucks up oil from the bottom of the transmission shoots it out to the front to the big pump. Now if you see here, that's, something's not right there. That should only spin about just a couple of thousandths, whatever you know, slop you have between the uh, splines on your shaft. So that's a problem. That tells me that a spline on the end of the flywheel is gone bad. 
This may be bad. This may be bad. This whole thing may be broken. Now, in the case of my 1100, when I did this exactly two years ago, because it had exactly the same problem, the little coupler that goes right here and goes into the PTO shaft, that was stripped completely out. Hence, not turning the charge pump, not feeding any hydraulic oil to the big pump in the front here, and thus forth, no hydraulics. We got all the same symptoms here. Now, the only way to do this the right way is to split it here. Now, follow along here, because this is fun. You have to split it in both places. You have to split it here, because this shaft only pulls out through the front of the transmission. See right here, it's got this little spline. There's a snap ring that goes on there to keep it from going back into the transmission too far. So you can't just split it at the transmission to pull the shaft out through the back. So, engine split. Got to come apart. Next, split it at the transmission. That coupler, you only got to split it this far because that coupler is only this long, so you only have to split it long enough to get that coupler out. That could be very well the problem. That seems like in all these things, that's the weak point as far as I'm concerned. I don't know that, but in my experience, 100% of the time on 50% of the Massey Ferguson tractors that I own, that's been the problem. So, like I said, but split the front off, get all this stuff out of the way, pull the transmission forward. Now, if it is the back shaft, that can be pulled out through the back and top, um, but we won't know. This is the hard part. We got to do all this first. And it's anybody's guess as to which of all those parts has failed, causing that not to work. So, like I say, unless I want more practice doing this, it's best just to do it all the first time. Just just replace all that crap. I don't plan on using the PTO on this tractor really ever. So chances of it going bad on me again are pretty much nothing. But unless that PTO basket's spinning, I got nothing here. So it's time, my friends, to divide and conquer. All right, here we go. I'm gonna start from the front, work my way to the back until there's really nothing left. Let's hit it. Okay guys, if you're still here, thanks. Glad to see you. Okay, let's get a little recap. So, all the sheet metal's gone. The uh, cold air tubes are gone. The warm air tubes are gone. I'm ready to jack the cab up forward, and the reason I'm gonna do that, I don't know that it's going to make it any easier to get to any of these bell housing bolts, but however, it will make it easier to see everything I need to on top of that transmission when I go to pull that forward too. So, and I figured it's easier to move heavy stuff around when the tractor's all yet in one piece rather than if I were to <coughs> excuse me, pull the front end off 
but then have to jack the cab up, then, you know, I just, just trying to keep things simple for myself. So, now on these 5 Series Masseys, they make them pretty simple. You've got, if you watched in the, if you were paying attention, take the 6, excuse me, 8 cab mounting bolts off, which is all mounted to rubber, so that's nice. It's a nice, smooth feeling cab. You got to pull out a few bolts around the snout there and a few bolts around the floor pan and, uh, you know, stick some bolts in the hinges in the back and she lifts just right nice like a cab over semi. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and raise this up. Now, fun fact, since I didn't think this through real well, I had to pull the basketball hoop. There's room for the tractor to fit under it, but when you jack the cab up, she gets taller. So, I guess we won't be shooting hoops for a little while. All right, well, I guess let's, let's do this. Okay, take two. I had a, I had a catch. Let's try that again. like it's supposed to. Yes. Let's have a look over here. Sure enough. Let's take her all the way. That's all she wrote. That's all she's going to write, anyhow. Well, I guess. I think just for safety's sake, maybe I'll put some blocks of wood in here. That cab's pretty heavy. I don't need it cutting me in half. So, with Mr. Cab up out of the way, you've got plenty of room to get in here. I might still have to drop these tanks. I had to drop them on my 1100, but we'll, uh, I thought maybe there'd be more room in here, but probably not. But either way, it's a whole lot easier to drop the tanks with all this bullshit out of the way. So I'll probably go ahead and drop these tanks. Now when I go to split this, I'll uh, pull these bell housing bolts off. I got a few things to dismantle right here. Get it around the stand and slide that forward. That's easy. We can pull that shaft out of the center like we talked about in the beginning here. And... Uh, then basically it's just simple enough as pulling the transmission bolts off, get the trans jack under it, pull that, hit the next, uh, get that coupler out and inspect the PTO shaft. And then we just got to whip the whole thing back together and paint it and it's practically brand new. So cheers everybody. I sure appreciate you watching today in our prep for surgery. Stay tuned. More fun yet to come. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks, JT.